Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Captain Roman Wojnarski coming to you live from Station 334, which is, of course, the beautiful waterfront home of Toronto Fire Services Marine Unit. Today, we're talking to you about generator and fire safety involved with generators. As you know, generators have recently become a very popular secondary backup power source, many different household uses, uh, remote locations, cottage countries. Today, my good friends, Carlo and Brock are gonna to talk to you about safely using, storing, and operating generators. We'd like you to be part of this conversation by giving us your questions, your comments, even if you just wanna say hello, we very much welcome all of your input. So, Carlo, Brock, what do we know about generator fire safety? Well, thank you very much, Roman. Yes, generator fire safety, when do we need it? They're very common nowadays with power outages, with storms, lines falling from uh, power lines and here we go we, we've got a generator what do we do Carlo well essentially when you end up having a generator one always end up reading the manufacturers instructions there's certain things that you have to abide by to make sure that you're using it safely one of the key things that we have to really pay attention to is distance clearance distances so how far away should a generator be from a building or a or a window or door opening. Right, Carl. generally I'll use the same rule which we're using for our safe distancing. Two meters, six feet. One, it should always be outside. Never run it inside, never run it inside a garage, never run it on your mezzanine or inside your basement. The fumes that come off of this is very, very similar to the gas engine of your car. So that's CO? CO, carbon monoxide. It's clear, it's odorless, you can't detect it, and it's lethal. And it's poisonous, isn't it? Carlo? Absolutely. Yeah. So we do not want that anywhere inside our home. But exactly. how do we end up making sure that if, if the leak does end up coming in? And that can happen. You right. have wind swirling around and sure. leaks in your home. So what do we need in our home? The best thing we can have carbon is monoxide. our co common carbon monoxide and CO uh, detector. It's also combined with a smoke alarm. So that's extra protection, and where should it be, Carlo? Near the sleeping areas, right? Right. Every every floor level where there is a sleeping area outside of the bedrooms. Exactly. Good right. Point. A lot of people tend to put it in their furnace. You want this to be as loud as possible to awake you in night. Absolutely. So if it's making and buzzing noises in the evening, hell, it won't even wake me up out of my sleep. It's exactly. not enough. But we want to know it's working, so we need to test at least once a week, minimally once a month. Push the test button, hold it hear the alarm, make sure both CO and smoke are working, and replace the battery if it's needed to be replaced. Right. So our next thing now, we're going to be talking about actually beginning to use the generator. Once you end up having your clearances in place, we have to fuel it. So you obviously open up the gas can, you fill it up, and you do But what that. if it's hot, Carla? Ah, very good point. You never, ever, ever refuel whenever it's running because Gasoline is a flammable combustible gas and it gives off a lot of fumes that and are the, very the combustible. Sparking away. Exactly. So. That it could flare up and last thing which you want is to end up having this flammable liquid leaking down into the crevices of your generator, then you got a flame up. That's the worst thing which you want to you do. Want you don't want to end up doing that. And also, you know, even just keeping the fuel, we have to keep it stored in a proper way, right? So Brock? what kind of containers are we looking at? We're looking at small containers. Yep. And we'd look at a ULC, yep. or we could look at a, a or CSA, CSA, and small containers. Don't right. get big containers. Make sure they're sealed properly right. and screwed tight. Right. There's a Always. spout on the end. Take yeah. them out. Put the spout. Recheck. Add, add a, you know, to stop it from, like Carla was saying, yep. from leaking down on the engine, the hot engine, or any, any kind of area. Put, use a funnel yes. to help you direct the fuel into the tank. And Always when it, it's cool. Keep, keep it a little bit below um, the maximum control. level. Yeah, don't go to the very top. Don't you know? Don't right. let it overfill. Right. Overfill right. and spillage, you shouldn't restart your generator. Right. So now that we've got the uh, the generator uh, refilled, so and what now what do we plug in? Exactly. This is what we're going to talk about right now. Good. Now. The generator, and all different generators come with different types. We have other generators that come in big and small in size. Some are small, some are big. Whatever generator you end up having ends up having plugs that you plug into. They also end up having a circuit breaker also attached with it as well. So if whatever you're using what overloads would the average it, on that circuit breaker be? It varies per generator. On this one specifically, these two plugs here end up having a 15 amp, and they also have another, almost like a, a circle plug, which is a rated at 21. So we but, use that for Harry. 
higher wattage or exactly. higher amperage now, type things. When you bring in the electrical wire from this generator, which is outside into right. your home, use a good extension cord. This is an example of something which I found in the basement of a bad extension cord. Look at this. A lot of loose connections. I don't even know. A lot of torn and I think someone wiring. must have gifted this to me or something. Look so. at the plug. It's all shot. It's got fraying. So that this, should go to the scrapyard. And get yeah. Some See, there, there's a fraying we, right yeah. there. So it's you know that, this right? this thing should be put out the pasture. Okay. It's done. done. Get yourself a good quality that looks exterior. Brand new. I actually believe it or not, this is about three or four years old. You kept it in good condition. Yep, I have a nice wire wrap on Everything's it. Everything's nice and uh, brass, you know, no oxidation. It's a on certified it. extension cord. It's got three prongs. It's got a grounding plug. That's very important. Would that be CSA approved? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. So this you end up plugging in, and you run this all the way inside your home. Okay. Now, if you end up having more than one device that you have to plug into, so use your interior power bar. So that would go inside that. Yeah. Okay. So this you plug into there. And then you also have an additional breaker here that okay. this will trip before that trips off. Ah. So that is giving you that extra protection which we want. So we don't want to run too many things over a 15 amp. Eh? Exactly, exactly. And also another thing too, there's also these extension here too. But always remember, use the right extension cord for your purpose. If you end up having a device that ends up having a ground plug, you cannot use this two-prong type outlet. So that's typical for lighting or something. That's right. This is great for a lamp cord or maybe a toaster, something which doesn't have a lot of draw. It is certified, but it's certified for use indoors. You can't even use this outdoors. Okay. So it, it's key to know for what your application is to use the right material. That's Good what we need to end up doing. So yeah, so we end up covering that. Uh, another thing which a lot of people do, because sometimes you end up having a very, very long outage, Remember the ice storm from a yep, few years ago. Yep. So what happens there? What do we need to do if we're having to hook up to our own house wiring? Well, that is a very tricky and dangerous thing. Okay. You can do it. And there are people who end up having generators would installed. Would I try to attempt that? I would suggest that you don't. Okay. Unless so if you're a I certified get? electrician. No, I'm not. Well, I, neither am I. Okay. So in that case, you have to end up making sure you end up getting the proper person to do the correct wiring. Okay, good. What they're going to do is that off this main circle oh, so plug gonna, there they're going to bring a here, very right? heavy duty extension cord okay. to this thing called a transfer switch All right. what a transfer switch is is basically one switch it's a manual switch that either goes left or right when it's on the generator it takes the power from the generator only yeah we got a blackout we've got no power should we be disconnecting the power so that we if it does come on we don't get a shock well the whole yeah exactly the, yeah. that's why you, you uh, once so this transfer switch is installed is we want, eh? when you switch that over it'll only select either the city supply for the electrical or the generator so that's a more permanent uh, application yes where you know you're going to be ground out for a day or two and you need the generator to run to run your right. lighting and your toaster and your and then when the power comes machine, back you can switch it over and, then and when they do that off the generator, right? electricians they select certain circuits in your home that you need running your furnace running say for example the lights in your kitchen the lights to your bathroom what some about, hallways what about the air conditioner it's so hot now today it depends Would on that be able to cover an air conditioner uh, not this one specific so generator no generator they do that. sell house generators so as we well get something like this is that a big one if you can afford it great <laughs> <laughs> i keep on trying to talk my wife into it but you know she doesn't want to give me one so it is what it is but um, we've covered pretty much everything which we need to cover today, right? Well, almost. Uh, well, we, we should just talk about remind, COs again. We just want to remind people about yep. CO. Yep. This machine here is a portable generator and it produces carbon monoxide CO. So again, have your carbon monoxide detector located near the sleeping area, tested once a week or minimally once a month. It's a combination of both uh, smoke and CO. Right. Sleeping areas, right. testing, making sure, because wind can swirl around on a yep. heavy stormy day and bring CO into your house, so we want to know when that's happening, and we have to look at maybe relocating the generator. Absolutely. So that covers pretty much a lot of things, and we've had, um, it's a live broadcast, so I know we've had some questions. I'm going to check with Roman. Roman, have we had any questions? Yeah, we've got a couple of questions here. First of all, great information, fellas. I really learned something here today, I have to admit. Uh, you, Dave Thanks. is emailing us or sending us a question here asking about clearance from his uh, kitchen window. He can only get about three feet away. Guys, this is a small generator. Because it's a small generator, will three feet clearance from his window do the trick? 
No, I think what he's got to do is keep that window closed and move the generator at least two meters or six feet away from any building openings or even the building itself. CO can penetrate buildings, so we want to keep it away as much as possible, get that CO away from the building. Away okay. From the building. All right, fantastic. Uh, so remember that, Dave. And uh, Stan, Stan is a regular contributor. Thanks for your question, Stan. He's asking about use of generator inside a garage with the door open. He mm. said, uh, surely that's enough ventilation. What do you think, Carlo? Absolutely not. It's designed to be outside, and there's no qualms about it. Outside is outside. You don't want to have it inside the garage for the same reason which Brock was mentioning about the winds pushing those fumes in you don't know whether your garage is sealed to prevent those gases from coming so inside your home, in home eh? we do not want those gases coming in right. so in order to do this one keep it outside keep it six feet away and also why not even make sure that the exhaust on the actual generator points away from your home good point you fellow. don't want to direct any of these gases no, to your home you want to around. keep it safe yeah. you want to keep it away have them push away from your home that's the best way to be we covered pretty much everything today good job Carla. yeah thank you very much that's great thanks fellas listen if thank somebody's you, if somebody's got more questions or is seeking more information about this or any other fire safety related topic where can they go for more information Carla, you want to pick that up absolutely come visit us at toronto.ca forward slash fire not only do we have uh, a wonderful pamphlet on this one specific generator, but we also have a lot of different other pamphlets and fire safety information in multiple languages. So come on down and visit us. And again, Our thank you very line. much. Thank you very much today. We had a lot well, of fun. Thank Thanks, Roman. Good stuff. Thank, thank you, you, fellas. Thank you, everybody. Thanks to our audience at home. And remember, everybody, stay fire safe. And be COVID safe. Absolutely.